everybody, welcome back to our channel. My name is Miss Robinson and I'm back with another math video for you guys. Today we are in lesson 1.3 and in lesson 1.3 we are going to be estimating sums. Now we know sums are answers to addition problems and so estimated sums are sums that are not exact but around what the exact answer would be. So we've already learned that estimating or using estimation is good in life when you want to figure out about how much of something you need. If I'm cooking I might want to know about how much flour do I need in my recipe. If I'm buying something that I've been saving for, I need to know about how much I need to save. Also in this lesson, we're gonna talk about compatible numbers. Now when two people are compatible, that means they get along well, their friendship is very easy, no problems at all. So the same could be said for compatible numbers. Compatible numbers are numbers that get along well. That means they are numbers that are easily added in your mind without very much effort or work. So we're gonna be taking some actual numbers that were given. We're gonna be finding or transitioning them so that instead of dealing with two different numbers that are a little bit harder to add in our minds mentally, we're gonna come up with some compatible numbers to those two numbers and then that's gonna allow us to come up with an estimated sum. So it's important to know that in this lesson, we are not going to come up with any exact answers. And because we all may use a different set of compatible numbers in these problems, there are a lot of different answers to these problems that would be correct, depending on what sets of compatible numbers that you used. We will also re review how to come up with an estimated answer by using our rounding rules. So I will give you two examples, maybe more if I'm feeling extra energetic, but I'll give you at least two examples. One example will involve using compatible numbers, and another example will involve finding an estimated sum using our rounding rules. So I'm gonna go ahead and go ahead and set up the whiteboard so that I can give you guys those examples, then I'll be back with some closing thoughts for this video. So in this lesson, we are going to be looking at two add-ins and we are going to just be estimating their sums. So what that means is that in this lesson, we're never gonna come up with exact answers. We're just looking for estimated sums or estimated answers to our addition problems. <coughs> Excuse me, and we're gonna look at two different strategies to do that. The first strategy we're gonna look at is trying to create compatible numbers. And compatible numbers are numbers that get along well. They are easily added together in your mind or on paper, and they just work really well together and cause you very little stress when adding. So when you're trying to use a strategy of finding compatible numbers to come up with your estimate, you wanna think to yourself, what can I change my add-ins to that is closely there to the original number but will end up being compatible with my second add-in that I may or may not change as well. So in this example, I'm looking at 432 and I'm going to add 489 to that. So immediately when I look at the number 432, I know that 432 is pretty close to the number 425. And what I like about 425 is that it is easy for me to mentally add numbers that are based on 25s. So I'm gonna change 432 to 425. It's still relatively close to my original number, the, but the fact that it's 425, I know is gonna make it a little bit easier for me to add. Now I'm looking at my second add-in, which is 489. Again, I wanna keep it close to 489, but I want it to be something that is compatible or friendly with the number 425, meaning that I'll be able to add these two numbers together mentally to come up with my estimated answer. So 489 is very close to 475. Again, I like 475 because it's a number that I can get to using chunks of 25 in my mind. So now that I have these two new add-ins, I'm going to use them to come up with my estimated answer. And I'm just gonna make these arrows so that we know that those are not subtraction signs. So instead of adding 432 plus 489, I'm gonna add 425 to 475 to get an estimated answer. I know that 25 plus 75 is another 100. I like to think of money when I'm dealing with 25s. So I know that four plus four is gonna be eight, plus another one that I regrouped is going to be nine. So my estimated answer is going to be 900. Another way to look at that, if you kind of got lost in what I just did, is five plus five is going to be 10, 
So I brought down my zero here. I carried my one there. Seven plus two is nine plus one is 10. Brought down my zero here, regrouped the one there, and then four plus four plus one is nine. So 900 would be my estimated answer. So that would be the strategy of using compatible numbers where you're changing the add-ins to numbers that are close to it, but changing them to something that is just a little bit more mentally friendly so that you can add them a little bit quicker. The next example I'm gonna show you is where we are gonna use place value and rounding rules to come up with our estimated answers. So here we have 432 and 489. Notice that these are the same add-ins. We're still adding the same two numbers together, but this strategy we are going to use our rounding rules based on place value. So if they don't tell you what place value position to round to, and you are just coming up with an estimated answer, you always want to go to your highest place value position, which in both of these cases is going to be the hundreds place. So since I know that I'm going to be rounding to the hundreds, I'm going to box the digit that is in the hundreds place, which in both cases is the number four. Then I'm going to look directly to the right because the numbers or the digits to the right are the numbers that tell me whether I'm going to be rounding up or I'm gonna be rounding down. And let me move my board back a little bit so that you can see all of that. So let's look at 432 first. Now I wanna remember that the rounding rules tell me that once I box the number that is going to be rounded, when I look to the right, if that digit is below five, I'm going to round down, which really means that that number is not going to change and all the remaining digits turn into zeros. Also, if I look directly to the right and that number is five or higher, I would be rounding up. So that box number would change up by one number and the remaining digits would turn into a zero. So let's take a look and see how that works with the number 432. So I'm rounding to the nearest hundreds. I've boxed in the four to tell myself that is the number that may or may not be changing. I look directly to my right, there's a three there. I know that three is less than five, so that means I'm going to be rounding down. And I'm gonna circle these to tell myself the remaining digits will become zeros. So since I'm rounding down, the digit that's boxed won't change. So I'm gonna bring that four over. And I just showed myself that the remaining digits will be zero. So 432 rounded to the nearest hundred would be 400. Now let's look at 49. I've boxed in the four because I'm rounding to the nearest hundreds. I've looked directly to my right. <clears throat> Excuse me, now notice in this number, when I look to my right, there's an eight, and that number is higher than five. So in this case, I'm going to round up, which means that that number will in fact change. It will go up by one number. So instead of it being a four, it's going to be a five. I'm gonna remind myself that everything else will turn into zeros. So instead of 489, I'm gonna round that to 500. Then I'm gonna add these two together. Zero plus zero is zero. Zero plus zero is zero. Four plus five is nine. And that tells me my estimated answer to 432 plus 489 would be 900. So that when I really do add those two numbers together, my answer should be somewhere close to 900. And if it isn't, then I know I've done something wrong. And if it is, then I can be confident that I've added my two numbers correctly. So those are the two examples that I have for this lesson. Remember your two strategies are looking for those compatible numbers or those, those numbers that are friendly with each other or using your rounding rules like we did in this example to round to the highest place value position shown. So I'm gonna flip the camera back around and then I will give you guys some closing thoughts. Alrighty, so those were your examples in today's lesson. So the first example that I showed you was using compatible numbers. And remember, compatible numbers are numbers that get along so well that you can add them in your mind with very little effort. You won't have to use scratch paper. You won't have to use your fingers to count because you've turned them into numbers that are easily added together mentally. The second example we used was going over finding estimated answers but using our rounding rules. We know that when we look 
directly to our right, when we've identified what number that we're either gonna be rounding up or down, the number directly on the right tells us if we're rounding up or for rounding down and then once we've made that decision the remaining numbers and that number turn into zeros you want to also make sure that if you are using that strategy where you're using place value to find estimated sums you want to make sure that you're rounding both numbers to the exact same place value position and you always want to use the highest place value position that is available to you in that particular problem so with that being said that is today's lesson if you found it helpful please give this video a thumbs up and i will be sure to see you guys in the next one so i will see you then bye everybody